the hood is up. Because although there is a great amount of daylight coming through this window right here, because it's a beautiful, beautiful weather week in Buffalo. Even though all it does is snow here, apparently. I feel in a very dark place about my favorite football team. You might as well. I also don't want you to see the thousand gray hairs that have sprouted over the past three weeks. What a transformation of emotion over the past three weeks. Remember October 1st? It was just October 1st. We were on top of the world. The Bills had just beat the Dolphins by 28 points. We are running our mouths on Twitter slash X. Talking about how Sean McDermott had the most impressive win of his entire coaching career. I'm telling you the Bills are awesome and I believed it at the time for sure. And now I have no idea what to make of them. My excitement level is as low as it's ever been. At least, you know, in the past at least in this era of Bills football, probably since Josh's rookie year. Although I admit I did the, the hood thing. It was a bit theatric, of course, the whole the hood thing. I think I did this last year when they lost to the Jets and the Dolphins in back-to-back -back weeks. Not the Dolphins, the Jets and the Dolphins. Jets and the Vikings in back-to-back -back weeks. You know, they were fine from there on out. They won the rest of their games. The year before that, something similar, right? In 2021, they lost, they got they got killed by Indianapolis at home. They won on Thanksgiving and lost Trey White. And they were 7-4. and four. Then they lost to New England in the win game, ironically. Ironically, coincidentally. It's one of my things. Don't mean to get sidetracked here, but ironically, the word ironically requires contradiction. The fact that they played the Patriots in that win game and played the Patriots this past week, those are coincidences. Real snobby thing to talk about, sorry. But I'm just in a, I'm in a bad mood, I'm in a foul mood. Anyway, they lost the win game, then they lost uh, to Tampa Bay the next week. But they finally woke up the offense. They were down like 24-3, maybe it was, or they made it 24-10 early in the third quarter. And the offense was like, all right, what what are we? Because aside from that, that Thanksgiving game against uh, the Saints that I referenced, they had scored 15 against the Colts. They had scored just 10 against the Patriots. They had three in the first half against Tampa Bay. And then they woke up. And they, they finished with 27 in that game. Then they go 31, 33, 29, 27, 47, 36. Like, okay. The offense snapped out of it. Maybe that is what, maybe this will trigger it again. You know, just because we have that past precedent to go off of. But man, the Patriots are pitiful. They still are pitiful. They were pitiful coming in. They still are. What does that make the Bills? I might be afraid of the answer. Maybe it's just denial. I don't want to admit that they're bad. I, I spent almost 20 years of my life with them being so far below average and, and mediocre. Nothing better than mediocre. And now they're very good, or they have been very good. They certainly won a lot of regular season games. But, yeah, I'm worried. Four and three with... What has been a, a relatively easy schedule up to this point? Like you played the Jets. Talked about this when we played them too. You played the Jets and you had Zach Wilson and Nate Hackett. The two biggest punching bags of the 2022 season. And they come out week one and beat you. This past week, the biggest punching bag of the, of the year so far has been Mac Jones. And he just went 25 of 30 for 270 and two touchdowns. Walked you down the field for the game-winning drive. But yeah, you played the Raiders. You played the Commanders. You played the Giants. I expected wins against those teams, okay? Those are expected. Winning those games does nothing to move the meter for my you know, perception of you as a team. You lose to Zach Wilson... You lose to Mac Jones, my perception changes. And I'm afraid of what it is. 
Because I, I, I'm not, I can't sit here and tell you what it is. It's just, it's changed. And blame, you know, we have to get into it a little bit. The blame game, I've seen it all. I've seen it all on social media this week. I've seen every people blaming everybody. Blame doesn't have to be exclusive, but if it is, I think you, you have to, the first person you start with is the head coach, right? That's his job. To be in charge of the football team. To prepare the guys, to, to coach. like All that mumbo jumbo. That's where you have to look first. You want to dive a little bit deeper? You want to get into Ken Dorsey? And, oh, I'm, I'm so sick of the, the second down runs and the shotgun runs. Like, yeah, I, yeah. I think you can safely put, those are the things you can safely put on Dorsey. Is they're calling these shotgun runs. Like, he's calling those plays. I don't know the entirety of of the playbook. I don't know the plays that are called in the huddle. All I can go by are the results. This past week, I mean, people are blaming Dorsey, but for what? For one three and out in the second quarter? I mean, Josh throws a terrible pick on the first drive. They get a touchdown called back by a, a penalty, a, an OPI, which is apparently just a rub route when it's not OPI. You know, when they feel like calling it, it's OPI. Otherwise, it's a rub route. Latavius Murray just might have been a little bit too much, a little, made, made a little too obvious by running right into the defender. You're also running rub routes with Latavius Murray. Is that on the offensive court here? Maybe. Maybe. He's designing the formations, right? This, is, is it his decision that that's not James Cook and that that's Latavius Murray? I, I'm not sure. Is there a name for that formation? I'm not sure. I'm going to lend some credence to the possibility that, that that is true. But I don't know. And neither do you. But they get that called back. They miss a field goal. They make a field goal. There's, so they make the field goal after the OPI. They go three and out after that. Then they miss a field goal. In the second half, they go touchdown. Dawson Knox drop on fourth and two. Touchdown. Touchdown. What's the offensive coordinator's fault there? What, what, what are you looking at? Like, it's just, I know you got to zoom out a little bit. Because I know what, it, I know how it feels when you're watching it. And that matters too. Of course it matters too. And that's not to excuse last week's performance against the Giants. And don't, and I, I must apologize here. It took me eight minutes to apologize for not making a video last week, I simply, I, I ran out of time to do it. And I apologize. And I, and I, after the Patriots lost, you know, not the, the Patriots lost. The Patriots obviously didn't lose. After the Patriots lost, I thought, you got to get something out there, even on the short week. So here I am. That's not to excuse what happened against the Giants. Or the, the first half against the Jags. I think there are... things in there uh, I'm flustered I couldn't be more flustered right now I, I feel like I've done a good job orchestrating my thoughts up until this point but it's it's weighing on me P blame the OC sure a fall guy you need a fall guy last year it was Leslie Frazier and, you know, the whole thing that happened with Hamlin in a snowstorm. And we just ran out of gas. That was the fall guy, I guess. The, the year before, it was Heath Farwell. The fall guy. Look, I'm not sitting here telling you the Bills need to fire Sean McDermott today. I'm not. I am not saying that. I'm just saying they preach accountability at nauseum. Let's see some. I think that's fair. Would you disagree? I'm worried about the defense. I, I think, I mean, the defense ultimately lost you this game. I mean, Mac Jones, like I said, 25 of 30, 270 yards, two touchdowns. Mac Jones. The offense finally gets you to lead. What happens immediately? You allow a 34-yard swing pass? 
they get to a third and eight on that drive, and Mac Jones drops back and just lobs it up, and it gets over everybody and just lands in Hunter Henry's lap. Mac Jones should not be that effective. He's been terrible. They scored touchdowns on like two out of 33 possessions coming into that game. Two out of the last 33. I, I read that they had like six red zone drives all season. They had six on Sunday. I'm worried about the defense. I'm worried that the injuries are too much to overcome. That Trey White, the, the Matt Milano, the Daquan Jones, Ed Oliver didn't play. I'm worried that you're starting a sixth round corner and a seventh round corner. And, you know, safety's well into their 30s at this point. I'm nervous about it. That you're starting Dorian Williams, and he's been replaced in two out of three games by Tyrell Dodson, who was in the, the, the competition for the middle linebacker spot. Now he's playing outside. So is Dorian Williams. Out of necessity. Just out of necessity, because they have nobody else. Maybe they bring somebody in at the deadline. I don't really know who to tell you. The most obvious thing to me is obviously Dante Jackson. Why is Dante Jackson not a Bill? The Bills were very into him in the draft process about like five years ago. He's 28 years old. Carolina's own six. They don't think they really want to keep him. They might as well get something for him. Dante Jackson. That's my, that's my guy. Everyone wants to go at Patrick Sertan. I, I get that. Super expensive. I think Jackson can be had a little bit cheaper. You know Frank Reich. Just the Bills connection. I don't know. It's probably reaching. You better win on Thursday. You just better win. The Bucks are beatable. But I'm just I'm I'm nervous that the, the, the defense is just too it's too beat up. And the you know the best way to, to do that is to play good offense. The best way to counter that is to play good offense. But I'm worried that there might be a philosophical mindset to have longer sustained drives because you don't want your defense on the field too much because you know that they're a little handicapped by not having their best players out there. I don't want long sustained drives. I want Josh Allen slinging it all over the yard. It's the truth. Bill should too. Just score as much as possible. Who cares if you have to play more defense? Make them score more on your defense. You just, you have to beat the Bucks on Thursday. Or I mean this I mean the season's going down the it, it's it's circling the drain. It it will be circle it might you might feel like it's circling the drain right now. It will be circling the drain if they lose to the Bucks on Thursday. You have Joe Burrow coming up, you know, you have a couple home games against Denver and the Jets that you should win, but you have Joe Burrow, Jalen Hurts, Dak Prescott, Patrick Mahomes, Justin Herbert. Those guys are all coming for your defense. So you better win against Tampa Bay. I'm cutting this video short. I got to get out of here. I, I just I have to get out of here. I'm going to, I'm still going to make a prediction. I, I'm picking the bills to, to wake up, to snap out of it. Because they have no other choice but to. It sucks. It, it, it Injuries suck. Especially on defense. Dawson Knox injury sucks. Here's why I, there's a silver lining to that. I don't want him to be injured. The silver lining is that Dalton Kincaid needs to play more. That you're not going to run the 12 personnel with the two tight ends. You're going to get these receivers on the field more. Because I need to find a receiver that can contribute. Whether that's Deontay Hardy. Whether that's Khalil Shakir. I need, I need to know. I need to find out. I need somebody with... I, I, I need a talent profile at, at receiver. Or you need to figure out if your guys are going to, to flourish in this league or not. See, I know. I, I got to stop. I have to stop. Bills. Bucks. Thursday night. Bills. Bucks have a nice pass rush. They have nice receivers. The Bills are a little hamstrung at corner, of course. But, I mean, Atlanta just beat Tampa at home 16-13. So, I mean, give me the Bills. 31-19. I don't know. 31-19. Bills over Bucks. Guys, let's talk. Hit me in the comments. Hit me on Twitter. My Twitter handle, YouTube, username are the same. Enjoy your Thursday night.
Let's talk next week. But above all else, as always, go Bills.